What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right, guys. Every week, me and my beautiful wife here are going to give you guys some great tips, tricks, and things that will hopefully up your relationship to whole new levels by igniting those flames or maybe working on some things that might need to be worked on, right? Yeah. And if you're not in a relationship, you'll have this great information so when you go into your future relationship, it'll be right there when you need it and you can pull it out and use it. Yep. Just... Put it right there. Secret log box. <laughs> so um, let, let's get started on the topic of today. So the topic of today is hormones and how they can affect the relationship, both on a guy's side and a girl's side, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you know what? It might not start off with this issue. It might start off with this issue. Who knows? But usually couples, if they, let's say, meet in their 20s and they start dating and then marriage and then kids, the whole nine, there could be some issues with hormones in the late 20s or early 30s. There was, yeah. Right? For females out there, or even for males. It just is a whole new uh, crazy thing that's been happening with males and females, and especially with all the sicknesses out there affecting different hormones, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it doesn't even matter the sicknesses. We're talking about deodorants, laundry detergents, you know, just things that, that you're heating up your food in yeah. uh, plasticware in the microwave, like these weird things you would never think affect your hormones. I mean, it's ultimately like we're all doomed to have bad hormones. <laughs> hormones are gonna be messed up, so yeah. it's I, crazy. It's crazy, and, and the chemicals that Teresa's is talking about are EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, and they're all around us. They're really in the environment that we breathe in. There are a lot of plastics uh, that we utilize for either food storage or even for drinking, right, like water bottles. Um, and there's a lot of different things out there that are gonna affect your hormones on the inside. And we really don't get to see these hormones. It's not on the outside, right? So if we had like a broken arm, you could see a broken arm. And you could fix the broken arm because you can see where the problem's at, get it all adjusted, get it right, and then you're on your way to healing. Mm -hmm. With hormones, it's inside. So we really don't get to see inside of our body, right? We don't get to see really what's going on with our hormones or where they're at daily. Mm -hmm. Like when we look in the mirror every day when we wake up, we see our body and we're like, all right, cool, everything's fine. Even if there's a spot that's not supposed to be there and you've checked yourself, you're like, all right, I might need to go to the dermatologist and get this checked out. Mm -hmm. But for the inside, for hormones, you just You're, gotta feel bad. You might not even know you feel bad. You might not even know that these symptoms are hormone related because you're not educated on hormones. The average person really isn't. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. The average person today is a lot more in tuned and inclined getting, to look into these different medical treatments for hormones. Yeah, more preventative medicine. But some people really don't know what's going on and it really can affect your personal life, your quality of life, and also your relationship. Big time. Big time. And we're not just talking about sexual relationships. Right. Literally talking about just being like crazy. Right. right. You know, when I met John, I was, I was, I mean, listen, I'm crazy. All right. We'll get it on recording. <laughs> I'm crazy. So I don't need any more crazy on top of the crazy. Right. So anyways, come to find out, I actually had a high estrogen issue. And you know, anybody has high estrogen, just think about a, a female on their menstrual cycle, but it was like that all the time, right? So it's like, you know, I would even, I would even put my shoe on and the shoe would fit wrong and I'm like, Ugh! and like, you know, I'd start screaming and huffing and puffing and then, you know, I was being like almost bipolar, but I'm like, listen, I, I don't think I need any medications. I think something is seriously off, right? Yeah. Go check my hormones, come to find out yeah. it's my high estrogen. And it was, you know, it was, it was affecting our relationship because, you know, I was, being crazy with him, you know, as being mean and moody and, you know, plenty of other, you know, wonderful things that went with this, I'm sure. <laughs> Your boy's a survivor. Survivor! He's a soldier! <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's it, I think it's important because, you know, obviously we all know that hormones can affect you and the bedroom and all that stuff. And, you know, we all think the bedroom is very important. But, you know, being able to communicate with one another, like, 
I really think if your hormones are off, this is guys and girls, right? If your hormones are off, it makes you feel very, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it can make you feel a lot of different ways. Depressed, Sad, anxious, yeah. maybe short fused. Short fused. That's a big one. Irritable. Irritable. Like, because you could very be sensitive. very, very irritable. Or, yeah. yeah, maybe you'll start. Very sensitive. You'll be crying over something really, really, like, you shouldn't cry about. Yeah, I mean, guys are <laughs> crying over frisky commercials. And yeah. These, these little sap ads are on TV. Yeah, and then you're, you know? you're looking at them like, what's your problem? He's like, it's just my allergies, you know? It's, it's just, I need some Zyrtec. No, 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 no. You need to get your hormones checked. Because you're acting crazy. So, yeah. you know, if you ever feel like anything's off, you know, obviously there's some very bullet point things that can point to yeah. being, you know, hormonally off. Um, outside of being just, I have no energy, I'm tired. And remember, having no energy, being tired also affects the relationship. Because yep. then you don't want to do nothing, right? right? All you want to do is lay around and you don't want to go anywhere and you're tired. And, you know, me this morning, I was tired, you know, I was tired because I'm really tired and I just actually was not sleeping and I was working. But, you know, my hormones are dialed in, thank goodness. But, you know, it's like, you just don't want to do anything. Right. You literally don't want to do anything. So what if your partner's like out the door? Like, come on, let's go, let's go here, let's do this. Let's, yeah. let's go uh, anywhere, energy. you know, it's like, then you're not keeping up with them and then, you know, things can really fall off the bandwagon like that quick. It can put strains on the relationship. And, you know, if it happens for long extended periods of time, you know, the partner might be like, well, is it me? Or is it, you know, and what really questioning. is it? And, and why? You and, don't want to hang out with me. And then at that point, you know, like you're me. really starting to put a lot of strain on the relationship, right? And then how are you going to mend that? And the, the whole thing is, is that you need to, you know, repair yourself so you can repair the relationship. And that just happens. Even people that, um, you know, so obviously, you know, your sleeping patterns can be messed up because of hormones. You know, your weight gain or metabolism can be screwed up because of hormones. Your sexual function, your physical uh, state and uh, mental state can all be disrupted by hormones. Yeah, emotional. Um, emotional too, right? So, you know, even mentally, um, you know, so hormones can make you feel a different way. It could definitely off. make you, like, so you could have right? a scenario that takes place, right? And if your hormones are off, you can, versus your hormones not being yeah. off, you could treat that scenario two totally different ways. Yes. Just because of the way you're processing it. Yes. Right? Because the way that you, maybe you're feeling, if you had it dialed in and you weren't being so sensitive, yeah. maybe you wouldn't have been so upset about yeah. it. You know? So it's it's important, guys. I feel like we've uh, kind of skipped over that. We haven't talked about it in a while. So I, yeah. you know, it's telling John today. Topic. I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I think it's important because I get it all the time, you know, messages from guys specifically. We have a, you know, a good, nice little population of guys. But specifically guys because they're like oh you know now i get to play i get to play with my kids and i feel like my whole life has changed and i'm going to work and i actually want to go to work you know mm -hmm. i'm motivated to go do stuff and i want to hang out with my wife and finally like, better in the bedroom and you know just mentally you know, i mean once you start to really get better and feel better it just kind of takes you off and you get you get to get to go off to the races quality of life improves all the way around mm -hmm. for you and then when that happens for others that are around you it, it, yeah it spreads it, it's contagious right the positivity can be contagious or negativity can be contagious so in both ways in life so at that point you're really enhancing your life and you're enhancing the life of the people you love that are around you and that's really important i mean even if you have you know you have a relationship and hopefully that relationship just keeps progressing progressing and you guys get into a marriage and kids and the whole nine where these, these energy disruptions uh, or you know short fuse situations can not only affect your wife and your loved one, but your kids too as well, mm -hmm. right? And you know kids, they need a little bit more patience than adults do, I think, in a life because they might not know what's right or wrong in situations. You might have to correct them. And uh, you know when you're correcting an adult, it's a little bit more harsher, right? Because they should know right from wrong. But when you're talking to a kid, you know you, you got to take that in consideration. Sometimes. I mean, I've done it before where, you know, I've, I've corrected Peter and, you know, it wasn't because my hormones were off, it's just because I treat him like an adult. So, you know, I tell him that, you know, he's a kid. And I was like, yeah, he is a kid, you know, but I want him to know. I want him to know what, what's right and what's wrong and he should know by this time in his life. But sometimes right if, if his hormones might have been a little off for a, a day or two, because it happens to everybody, right? Yeah. You may, maybe you might have been, you might have been a little nicer about it. And John's a nice guy, man. I'm telling you, you would think it was the other way around, but this is the good cop, I'm the bad cop. That's fine. I don't mind being the bad cop, 
But, you know, when he does play bad cop, it's like, what? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What's yeah. happening? Yeah. What did I do? Who did I murder? <laughs> you know? So this is why, you know, I really like dogs because they just, they love you no matter what. They come back. Unconditional. You can, you can be, you can be upset. You, it's, it is. Yeah. It's unconditional love, you yeah. know? And then they just, they'll go away and they'll come right back. It yeah. doesn't matter what you do. They'll just always come right back yeah. and give you a lick. It's true. I'm like, wow. Animals are awesome in that light, man. Yeah, most, I, like, most I, like animals, a, I like a dog. Especially dogs are very, very forgiving. I like dogs. I'm allergic like, to cats, but I like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just something. And like I said, like, you know, it's something that you should get checked out. And whether, you know, it's 30 or late 20s or in your 40s or 50s, right? And you're feeling off in some way, shape, or form. You feel like things could be better. You know, you might be, you know, having depressional thoughts and, Nothing around you is depressing. I mean, mm-hmm. people look at this all the time and they're like, why am I depressed? You know, I have all these good things going for me, but I'm still not happy. Yeah. So there's something that you're missing or, you know, something that could be off, you know, inside your body. And the best thing to do is to check. And blood work is obviously the best way and method to find out about these hormones and different things that are going on inside your body. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's one thing that we do here at Type Medical Center that we do help a lot of couples out with. And we don't like to, you know, push ourselves on this as far as for therapies or services, but we think this is important enough oh, sure. to bring up in this episode where we can help people out there that might not know or might not know where to go for, for this help. And um, For the record, yeah. Titan Medical Center is not a gym. Titan Medical Center. We're a medical center. Yes. <laughs> Let me just put this out there. I don't know why people come up to us and ask us that. I mean... We wear gym clothes sometimes. I mean, I honestly don't wear that many gym clothes. But, I mean, there's people that wear gym clothes <laughs> with tank tops and it has tight on it, you know, just because we like shirts and stuff. Of but course. there's a lot of other things we do. But of this course. is one of the big things we do. This is a game changer for me when we open this business yeah. because I've had endometriosis since I was 16 years old. I've had five laparoscopies. Yeah. Five where they went in, burnt it all out, came all back, burnt it all out, came back. And surgeries are not fun, okay? Mm-hmm especially when they're going in there and burning things off, per yeah. se, and they can only see 10% of it anyway. But for all these years, okay, so we opened up Titan, nobody saw that I had a high estrogen. Come to find out, the high estrogen is what has been fueling the endometriosis. Yeah. Wow, yeah. what do you know? Yeah. I had to put this together. Me and John yeah. put this together and yeah. piece it together like a little puzzle, and then go into all the doctors that I've been seeing that have been, you know, running up my insurance for the laparoscopies and all the anesthesia and everything else they did all in the there. Recovery, all the <laughs> everything else they did in there. And I'm going in there saying, hey, listen, you know, I got five scars in my midsection because you guys went in, but why didn't we ever check this? Mm-hmm. I mean, would I have had five surgeries if mm-hmm. we checked this before? You know, and then come to find out, you know, people out there that have PCOS, same thing. You need some progesterone. Progesterone helps calm it down. You know, it's like, it's really important. I, I gotta, I've gotta make sure I tell you guys about it because it's important. It really is. And just, especially when you don't feel good, like if you generally just don't feel good, there has to be something else that's going on Mm -hmm. outside of just your maybe post COVID that you might be blaming it on or whatever it is you're blaming it on, not getting enough sleep, whatever. I mean, people are making excuses nowadays, you know, like I just, uh, just, I guess it's just how I feel. Be surprised. You fix it and then you feel so much better and you're like, wow. So this is normal. Yes. This is what normal feels like. I mean, for a minute I was thinking, I was like, I'm not really crazy. I'm like, I am freaking on John over like the stupidest things and he is the most patient man I have ever met in my life yeah. but thank goodness for that we are here <laughs> don't let the medical gaslighting go on medical gaslighting yep. is when somebody goes into the practitioner and tells them they have these issues and the practitioner doesn't really look into it mm-hmm. it just kind of blows off the issues that are going on and say this is just normal you're gonna have to live with it okay yeah. so the true way to find out about your hormones is the blood test Type Medical Center can help you guys out with that. And catch us every week here on ABC, 11 a.m. on Sundays. If you guys miss it, don't worry. You guys can DVR it. If you miss it there, don't worry. YouTube's got your back. Type in Type Medical Center. Hit the subscribe button and the all notification bell. You'll just get to see me and Sharice and a lot more cool content from Type Medical Center. So we appreciate you guys joining us every Sunday. And we'll see you guys next Sunday. See you then.